Hello and welcome to the Epic Marketing Show. Today I'm really excited to bring you this topic about how you can assess and critique your own campaigns. Now, in particular, the strategy was created for Infusionsoft, but it's platform agnostic, so it doesn't matter what you're using, you can still use this strategy. So make sure you've got yourself something delicious. I've got a gorgeous dessert tea. I believe it's a strawberry velvet cake or something like that. It does genuinely taste like cake, it's really nice. So make sure you've got yourself something and let's get started. Okay, so when you're getting started with your campaigns, you definitely, before you launch them, you wanna just critique and assess them to make sure they're gonna be the best thing possible. But if you've already got a campaign in place as well, you wanna make sure that you optimize that campaign and you assess and critique it to make sure that you've got the best version of that possible. So I'm gonna take you through our process for assessing and critiquing campaigns both before they go live and once they're already running so that we can optimize them. So the first thing you wanna be able to do is have a look at the purpose of the campaign. Okay, so make sure you've got the purpose of the campaign written down. Um, so whatever you want that campaign to be doing, it needs to be very, very clear and very obviously written down somewhere. And the reason I say that is because when people go about building campaigns, they have an idea of what they want the purpose to be in mind, and then they go off and create something and get all excited, and they end up creating something that is completely not towards the purpose of the campaign, and it happens very, very often. It's not, it's a very common mistake. It's not, it's not something that happens infrequently. It's not a rarity. So make sure you've got the purpose of the campaign really, really clear, and make sure that the structure that you've created actually fits that purpose. Once you've done that, have a look at the overall flow of the campaign. So have you actually got this visually mapped out and represented somewhere? And I'm not talking about in your software. So if you're using something like um, Drip or ConvertKit or Infusionsoft, you might actually be able to see it visually represented like on the, on the flow builder. I'm not talking about that. You need to have a flow chart put together of your campaign so that you can actually see everything that's happening. It's super visual and um, it's great for getting buy-in from the, the powers that be, if you've got powers that be above you, but it's also really good for just sanity checking what you're doing and communicating with everybody as to what the campaign does. Flow charts are really, really important and we do not implement campaigns without a flow chart for that campaign. We just don't do it. Um, so it's a critical part of our process. So make sure you do have have that visual representation of that flowchart, um, and sorry, a flowchart of that campaign. And it's a really, really important step. Don't miss it out. So if you, once you've got everything mapped out, there's something really cool that you can do. And that really cool thing is that you can look for buckets. Now, <laughs> I've actually got a bucket over here. Um, and when I used to run workshops, I used to give people buckets specifically because the, this part of the process is so important um, that sometimes you need a visual reminder of that bucket. My favorite meme is actually a walrus with his bucket. Um, and, you know, I maybe don't want to draw parallels between myself and a walrus, but I think it's really important. It's a really very vital part of this, of the process. So here's what I mean by buckets. Put bucket front and center, front and center now. So here's what I mean by buckets. So effectively, when you've got your flow um, and your visual representation of your campaign, you'll be able to see a couple of things that you might not have been able to see when you're you know, in the planning process for this effectively. And that is that there are gonna be parts of your campaign that are either dead ends for people going through it, or there are parts where stuff just falls into the void and, and, and doesn't actually get kind of kept. Um, and so those, those kind of dead ends and those places where things fall out, we call those holes. And effectively what you wanna do is you wanna take a bucket and you wanna put it under the hole to capture all of the leaks in your funnels or your flow chart. Um, and so what we kind of tend to do is we go through the flow chart and we identify where all of these dead ends are um, and where all of these kind of gaps are. And then we put a process or a system in place to capture and to fill that gap and to capture whatever's leaking out of that. And that is what we call a bucket. 
And so effectively, you're going to go through and make sure that you've got buckets in place for things. And in particular, you want to be looking at certain areas. You want to be looking at if someone gets somewhere and doesn't do something specific, can they not progress past that? So is there something that is blocking them from being able to move on? Um, so that is a, you know, a good place to make sure that you're incorporating something else where they can flow on. Um, secondarily, what you want to make sure that you do is you capture both positive and negative actions. Okay, so here's where having a kind of visual representation or a flowchart can let you down. Because most times when people create process, they create it really linearly. So they start at one point and end at one point and they're like, this is the journey the person is going to go on. Except for the fact that human behavior is like totally messed up and people aren't going to do the things that you actually want them to do. So you've got to make sure that your flow accounts for that. And that's where the second kind of level of buckets becomes really interesting because you want to be accounting for both positive and negative actions. So a positive action is where someone is maybe not doing the thing that you want them to do. Obviously, you want them to buy the product or do whatever it is that the purpose is. Um, they might not be doing that, but they might be showing you that they're interested. They're engaging with stuff, but that kind of positive action isn't being captured. So here's the perfect example of this. When someone is in a sales series and they click through to the sales page, but you don't track that positive engagement and you don't do something different. So we call this if this, then that. So if they click on the link, What's going to happen? What is the then? Then this happens. What happens? And so if someone clicks on the link, they're showing you that they're interested in the product that you're offering them, but you're not doing anything different with them. And that's a mistake. What you want to be doing instead is you want to have a car abandonment process in place that says, right, you captured, you clicked here. Let's capture you here. You clicked on this link, but you didn't buy. Why? Most of the time it's because they don't have enough information or they're not engaged enough or maybe it's the wrong thing for them. But you want to offer them the opportunity with a little bit of extra information that's on a different level to where they were previously. And you want to talk to them very specifically. So the car abandonment process is great for catching positive behavior. Another positive point is when someone actually purchases something. Um, and so that kind of positive behavior is showing you that they're very interested. And what's the point when someone wants to spend the most amount of money with you? It's when they've already purchased something. So that's a great opportunity to have an upsell or a cross sell. And then again, make sure you include the cart abandonment process in there as well. So those are some examples of some positive behaviors. Then we can have a look at negative behavior. So that's the second kind of bucket grouping. And the negative behavior is things like they didn't do anything at all. They didn't buy the product. They didn't engage with anything. Now that behavior is like screaming at you. I'm not interested in what you're offering to me. And that behavior is something that's super, super important to capture. And so at the end of the campaign, what you might want to do is you might want to segment them. You might want to ask them, well, what are you interested in? Um, you know, you opted in for this thing. You didn't buy. Why? Um, and are you interested maybe in some different content? And then if they don't respond to that, then you do what we call goodwill campaigns, which are little campaigns that go out to people, kind of giving them a taster of different types of content that might relate to your different products and services. And then you can segment them out depending on their engagement. Um, so that is capturing negative behavior as well. So basically, when you've got your flow, you never want to have any dead ends. You don't want to have any holes. You always want to make sure that you're putting a little bucket in place to capture all of that good and bad behavior. Okay, so once you've got your flow chart all nicely mapped out, you've got loads of buckets in place, you've got no holes and you've got no gaps, it's time to look at your data. Does your campaign allow you to collect the data that you need to collect in terms of your KPIs and that kind of stuff? And are you collecting data on that engagement and how people are behaving? So sometimes with systems, you actually have to build the campaign structure a little bit differently to collect certain bits of data. I know that we have to do this sometimes in Infusionsoft. So make sure that you are, um, before you're kind of launching or even when you're tweaking something that you've already launched, make sure that you are collecting data at the relevant points. And if you need to build something extra, build it because that data can be invaluable in deciding what you do next with your campaign.
Once you've got all of your data nailed, at that point in time, you should be happy with the structure because you've kind of gone through, it fits the purpose, you've had a look at the overall flow, um, you've made sure that there's no gaps and there's no buckets and you've put things in place for positive and negative behavior and you've got all of the data captured. So now it's time to look at the content. So you can go in now and have a look at the individual elements of the campaigns. Before we're just looking at the overall structure and now you're looking at the individual elements. Are the subject lines appealing if you're sending emails? Are they appealing? Are they going to make people open and, and kind of, you know, have a look at the email? Is the content relevant that you're sending them? Are the call to actions really clear? Um, um, you, have you got any, if this campaign's already been live, have a look at the data for the campaign. What are the open rates like? Have you got areas where the open rates are low? And if so, you need to tweak that. Have you got areas where the click-through rates are higher than others and the click-through rates are lower than others? Then have a look at why that's happening. You're, you're effectively just dissecting the content. So have a look at the content. So you want to look at the open lines, uh, the open lines, the subject lines for the open rates. You want to have a look at the content for the click-through rates. You want to make sure your call to actions are nice and clear. Um, don't have too many call to actions in an email, preferably only one. Um, if you, you know, two at a total push, but you only really want one. And then just make sure that all of that content and all of that information is relevant. Are you sending enough content as well? Have you got enough emails? So people tend to skimp on emails when sometimes, you know, you need to kind of be pushing emails out. You're sending them at the right time of the day. That's it's kind of looking all of that little bits of content now and dissecting all of that. And then finally, when you've had a look at the flow of the campaign, and then when you've had a look at the content of the campaign, I want you to take a step back and think to yourself, is it easy? So is it easy for your prospect to do what you want them to do? Sometimes you might put barriers in place to make sure that they are engaged enough, that's fine but you still want the individual components of the campaign to be easy. You don't want to make it overly complicated so that people can't actually spend money with you. That's, you know, worst case scenario, unless that's your strategy, then that's fine. But for the most part, you want to make this as easy as possible for people to go through the campaign. And so if there's any blocks in place that aren't actually part of the end purpose or goal, you might want to think about ways that you can make that a little bit simpler and streamline the process and make it more efficient. Okay. So that is how we critique um, and assess campaigns. So I want to show you something. This is a flow chart over here. So this campaign is really quite a simple campaign. So the premise of this campaign is to take someone from being a lead to being a new customer. Right, very exciting. So you're taking them from a lead to actually purchasing something. And in this campaign, someone opts in. So this is, this is an opt-in form. <laughs> Just pretend it's an opt-in form. Um, and then you are delivering the thing that you promised, generally the lead magnet. Um, and at that point in time, you also want to send them some kind of indoctrination or welcome series. If they're a totally new person, they've never consumed anything with you before, you wanna send them, you know, a little bit of little bit of stuff telling them about who you are and we like to call this along um, with the the Ryan Dice crowd this is a welcome slash indoctrination okay so you're indoctrinating them into into the way that you are so then you might have a series of emails that sell a product uh, let's say you've got, I think that flowchart's actually got six, but let's say you've got that amount of emails and then the, the idea is to get them to purchase. Woo! And then when they purchase, you're going to deliver. Okay, so that is the process that you're going to be going through as you do that. Very simple, straightforward campaign, series of emails, selling a thing and then delivering. But we have lots of problems with this campaign. Lots of problems. There's a bunch of buckets in here and I'm gonna show you exactly where those are. With pink. All right, gotta love, gotta love exciting colors. Okay, so the first place that you're probably not paying too much attention to is the thank you page. All right, so you wanna make sure that you've got something exciting on the thank you page. And I like to include some of this sort of welcome content 
right on that thank you page to make sure that you're kind of providing information and engaging them in the process, telling them what to expect and making it really clear right on that thank you page. So that's probably the first bucket that you've got. People tend to forget about thank you pages. Here's why that's important. A thank you page gets 100% of the attention and the traffic from the opt-in, 100%. Everyone lands on the thank you page because everyone always makes like waits to make sure that the form has actually completed. Um, so you're getting 100% of your attention here. Generally on average, the first email, only around 70% of people are gonna open that. So already you've lost 30% of your people. So that thank you page is vital at starting the engagement process. So I like to put a little welcome video on the thank you page. Recently, I've been taking my own advice and we've started putting our own videos on the thank you pages and it's made a huge difference to the open rates for our lead magnets. So super important that you think about that first bucket, which is right on the thank you page. Then, after the point in time when they've, they've kind of opted in, they've, they've consumed it, one of the buckets is over here, and that is making sure that effectively people actually consume the lead magnet. So have, have they clicked to download the lead magnet and are they actually utilize the lead magnet? And if not, what you probably wanna do is put a series of reminder emails telling them to open the goddamn lead magnet, you know, consume the thing that you've signed up for. So that's another bucket. Then there is a huge bucket here. Because <laughs> let's say they click through in these emails, but they don't buy. Okay, so at that point, what you want to do is you want to start a cart abandonment process. And the cart abandonment process is a specific targeted emails for those people who click but don't actually buy. Um, so that is a big area that we see very, very often is this, this kind of cart abandonment process that people don't put in place because they don't track that positive behavior. So over here, we're kind of adding a little bit extra in. Here, we are tracking for negative behavior. This is tracking for positive behavior. Now, there is one big area of positive behavior that people generally tend to forget about, and that is right here. Okay, this is very important. After the point of purchase, um, people have indicated that they're actually interested in what you're selling them um, and they're happy to spend a little bit more money with you potentially. So this is your opportunity to offer an upsell or a cross sell. Okay, so that's your, that's your next bucket that you're kind of creating for. And then what happens to the people who go through this entire campaign and do Nothing, a big fat nothing, sweet F.A. Um, so they've done absolutely nothing. They haven't really engaged with the stuff and they certainly haven't bought your product. At that point in time, that is negative behavior screaming at you. So what you wanna be doing is you want to segment them, okay? So you wanna kind of, you can either send them an email that has some links inside it, say three links, and say, are you interested in A, B, or C? And see if they click on any of those. If they don't do that, what you might wanna do is do a goodwill campaign, which is a series of emails that teases a specific bit, uh, one specific topic. So you generally put three emails together in a goodwill campaign, um, and you might wanna do that times two and see if they kind of, if they buy on any of those. Um, and then if they, you know, still don't buy or are not engaged, that's when you wanna add them into the long-term nurture and in the long-term nurture, you wanna track their engagement as to what they're interested in, and then you might wanna trigger them back into sales emails. So effectively, that tiny little campaign now looks very different. It's taking human behavior into consideration. We're using both positive and negative behavior to segment people out and to help kind of make sure that we're providing information in the best way possible. And we're also, um, you know, making it a little bit more conversational. We're making it a bit more real. We're making it a little bit more purposeful. And this as well will increase your conversion rates because you're capturing those different bits of attention and you're giving them the information based on how they're engaging with your content. So that is how I recommend that you go about assessing and critiquing your stuff. Look at the overall structure. Once you've looked at the overall structure and purpose, make sure that you also look for the individual bits of content and make sure that you're optimized for all of that as well. 
Okay, so that's how you go about and kind of ninjify a campaign. If you need any help with ninjaizing any of your content um, or your ideas or all of that kind of stuff, hit us up, pop me an email at ninja at automationninjas.com. We love helping people assess and critique their efforts. And we have quite a few products that will help you do so. Um, and of course, if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you've got any questions or comments, just chuck them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and I'd love to know how you're gonna utilize this strategy in your business. So until next time, go forth and be epic.